practicing violin with Jennifer Clift. In this video we're going to go through the piece Over the Rainbow from the Wizard of Oz which is in Grade 3 of the Royal Schools of Music syllabus. I'm going to work through this three ways. First I'm going to work through and look at all the different things, the kind of things I might say to students um, if they're working at this piece. Then I'm going to do a slow practice playthrough. Although this is a slow piece, it's still worth taking down tempo and playing really accurately and getting everything really in place. And then I'll do a third playthrough which will be up to exam tempo. So Over the Rainbow from The Wizard of Oz is um, sung by Judy Garland and if you haven't already seen it, go onto YouTube, look for Judy Garland singing Over the Rainbow and you'll see exactly how it, how it is. And it's the most beautiful song and, and when we play it, we need to have that same feeling of flowing and it's too often it can be a little bit static, a bit too slow and a bit static. So we're going to feel, really be thinking in phrases moving forward in the music. Um, the form is ABA, so we're going to be playing the first part, then the middle section, this is where we're going to be using second position, and then the first part comes back. We're in D major, so a really nice, comfortable key, and we're going to get that first octave really bang in tune, those octave Ds. And then uh, the key signature, 2-2. Two, two. Now this is going to... Students sometimes ask me what's the difference between 4-4 four, four and 2-2, two, two. and of course both have four quarter notes or four crotchets in the bar. But the difference is that 2-2 two, two really has to be feeling a pulse of 2 and that's going to help us with the flow of the music and that feeling of moving forward. So to start with, the first um, octave it's important to get that bang in tune. So we're going to, we've got our open D string and we're going to find the third finger on the A string. Very slowly and quietly, give your ear time to hear. And then we'll check out the octave. Now here it's very important to have a very smooth bow and especially smooth bow changes. Um, too often I see at the end of a bow a sort of jerk, a bit like a swimmer doing a tumble turn and pushing off the end of the pool. And what we really want to have is the feeling like a screen saver when it goes boom and just touches and goes. So we're going to get to the end, touch and come back. So this, the speed of the bow is not going to change. So we're starting the beginning. This is the third bar where we start playing. And then the next bar, very smooth. And in this bar, this long A, it's on and up up bow but what we want to do is try and make a diminuendo here so that when we get to the this B we're going to bring our arm up to support so there's no bump we don't want we don't want any bumps like that so very smooth the arm moves as a unit that's six, so those two fingers close. One, two. Now here we stretch out our third finger for that C sharp. And we can use the fourth finger there for the D, just a tone away, so it's nice and comfortable for the fourth finger. Or we can use the open string, I don't mind either. circle within the same kind of tempo and then repeat and that second phrase is the same as the first. Now we get to bar 18 where we're going to move into a second position. So we're going to do that long D. Just a word about the bow here. For this next phrase, what I do is the last note of bar 18, I do, I tuck in another extra little down bow, and then I do up bow and down bow in bar 19 to follow the what we call the hairpin, so the little mini crescendo and the diminuendo. So 
up, down in the next two bars, up, down. And that's going to help us, we're following the natural weight of the bow, to make those little crescendos and decrescendos. So we've done the D, and first of all, to find that A, we're going to put down the, third, the fourth finger to find that, um, that A. We can check it with the open A string. And now, just lifting everything, and very gently, we're sliding up and put the third finger in the same spot. As you can hear, if it doesn't hit exactly, then just move it. Decide, is it a little bit above or a little bit below, and then put it in the same spot. So now I'm in second position, and what I suggest you do that several times. Fourth finger, lift, third finger. Again, fourth finger, lift, second finger. And as you see, when I shift, and it's a tiny shift, we're only going one position, Everything moves together. Don't leave your thumb behind. Don't do anything weird. Just one unit. So just like that. Okay, so we're now, we've got our A here. And now we need to go back a tone for the G and a semitone for the F sharp. So, all right. So now we're at the, near the point, a little down bow. going to be a long up bow, one, two, right to the heel so that we've got enough bow for this long B. One, two, three, stop. Again, another little down bow. G sharp, so right behind that A. And here I'm going to do two and two, so down bow, up bow. And that helps me do the crescendo. And now on the first finger on the um, C sharp, so still second position. And here I'm going to slide gently back into first position. So you're going to have to work on that a few times. And as you can hear, I go very light with the finger so I can even hear that slight slide for when I'm working at it. And so now, and then, right at the beginning, like the beginning, but now it's mezzo piano, so less bow, not much bow, and then the last line is even quieter. So really become inside yourself, it's as if you're far away in the distance. Make it as beautiful as possible. And the very last note, so we, we, we're going to be in the heel, very, very light, nice round fingers on the bow, so we're supporting, and we're going to count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. With a diminuendo, no jerk at the end to finish off. All right, just a very, just float off into the air. Now we're going to go for our slow performance. Um, I'm going to set the metronome for a minimum or a half note at 38. And we're really going to work on slow bows with even speed and doing slightly different bowing to create the different dynamics. So if it's louder, we're going to have the mezzo forte at the beginning using the whole bow, the mezzo piano using maybe half of the bow, and so that we really hear some difference there. So we start by setting up our octave to start. And if you just do that very quietly, right in the point, give your ear he uh, a chance to hear it, and then we know that first bar is going to be right there. Now, counting these two bars rest. One, two, one, put your bow on the string, two.
exam tempo performance, I'm going to put it at the minimum 52 as they suggest in the edition. So the same feeling, if two in a bar and really flowing. So finding our octave. One, two, one, two. As you see, I start the writ a little bit ahead of time. I think it, it it's naturally asks for that. So I hope this video is helpful for you for preparing and practicing over the rainbow. Um, let me know in the comments down below how, when your exam is and how you get on. And uh, check out my other videos. I've got tutorials for the scales and arpeggios for grade three, as well as some um, other grades. Um, good luck in your exam and thanks for watching.